Have you ever wondered what your pet is thinking? Yeah, I ask her constantly what's going on inside that coconut. <laughs> and I never think I'll find an answer. But what if you could? I assume it's pretty standard. Uh, it will go from food, 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 to sleep, 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 and then to play, 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 and then repeat. What if there was more? Do you ever stare into her eyes and think, what is going on in there? Of course. I mean, you always want to know what your, your animal is thinking. Come here. Well, it turns out you may be able to find out if you're willing to pay hundreds of dollars for a paranormal peek into your pet's mind. And a growing number of Canadians are. How's business these days? How would you describe it? Absolutely phenomenal, on the upswing. All right, Rui, come on in. Angel Morgan is a pet psychic. These days, she's often seeing more than 20 pets a week and charges up to $200 an hour to tap into what animals like Brewy have to say. So I want to tap into Brewy, please. Calling us guides, guardians, angels, archangels, all those of the light. Ah, there we go. Brewy is a therapy dog. It's interesting. He's liking his work more now, too. Um, he wants to do more kid work. Okay, like that's really important for him. And he literally, you know I like kids. He hurt his toe and seems a little nervous about a new baby on the way. It's why Athena D'Amato brought him here for a quick check-in. He's going to become this baby's protector. This will be our third visit with her. Um, and we always end up learning something new and hearing what he's thinking and how he's feeling and what we can do to make his life a little bit better. Oh, give me Morgan says she's busier than ever because people are looking for deeper connections post-COVID, especially with their animals. Who's next? They look at them like they are their children. And I've had people say that, this is my son, this is my daughter. They're family. Hi, baby, come here. Oh, yes. Remember we were talking earlier? You said, you asked me if I am your new mummy. I am not. It seems fitting that Morgan works part-time out of a witchcraft store in Newmarket, Ontario. Because let's face it, this does seem a little out there. She feels very safe. She feels very safe. Dogs, birds, you name it, Morgan says she can talk to them all and even listens in on chats between her cats and spider. Okay, well, I remember walking in one day and I saw them sitting there and they were bored and I could literally see the cat sitting going, I have nothing to do. And the spider's like, yeah, this is so not right. I'm just not having a good time today. And I heard the spider going, stupid, she's so stupid. It's a little hard to believe that yes. you're talking to your spider, that you're talking to your cat. To me too. To you too. Yeah, yeah, no, I kid you not. Leanne, come on in. Morgan says she can't help but connect with animals, including those that have died. It's one of the reasons Leanne Delap is here. I feel like everything you did for this particular animal was amazing. And yeah, there was nothing more you could have done. I just, it's comforting to know that I, she could tell me that I did do it at the right time. Because you have to make the choice to put her down? Yeah, you have to make the choice to put her down. There's comfort in believing, and people here are not outliers. I think that's why she loves them. Recent polls find about 60% of Canadians have faith in or are open to the paranormal. It could be why business is booming for pet psychics all around. She's just talking to the squirrel. Meg Vickle is also a pet psychic. That's her crossing paths with a squirrel on her way to meet us. Thanks for meeting us. Yeah. You, you seem to stop to talk to the squirrel, is that true? I acknowledged, yeah. If that sounds kind of nutty, well, you're probably not on Vickle's wait list. The people who come to you are already gonna have that openness. I'd say there's a crack in the door, if not more. And they're, like you said, openness. So when I ask people to come, I set an intention to attract clients that have an open heart and open mind. And she's attracting more than ever. Tripled. Your business has tripled? Tripled, probably in the last 18 months. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah, it's been really fast growing. Known as Canada's Dr. Doolittle, most of Vickle's work is remote and she charges up to $500 for a house call. She's even coaching others now because she says she can't do it all on her own. How do you do it? Do you see words, images? Like, how does it work? What do you see? Okay, so it's, it's it all energy-based mm -hmm. and these are uh, telepathic ways of communicating with all sentient life, mm -hmm. including a tree. But do they talk to you? I guess that's what people want to know. Yeah. Can you read their mind? When you put the pieces together, yeah. It becomes a communication, okay. okay? So 
yeah, I guess point blank to answer your very basic question is like, can you read their mind? I'm reading their energy. Sure, you can say their mind. There is no communication going on. I can say flat out that there is no scientific evidence that shows that people can telepathically communicate with animals. Um, none that I've seen. Kenny Biddle is a paranormal investigator. Yeah, that's a thing. He works at the Center for Inquiry in Amherst, New York. All right, so this is a pet psychic. Part of Biddle's work involves scrutinizing pet psychics in action. A chinchilla. And whose bed does he go on? Uh, he goes on my bed sometimes. Yes, he so the first question she asks, like, what, whose bed does she go on? Like, if you're talking to the pet, you should know this. And then this last clip, they have a miniature pony here that has sneakers on. And he said he doesn't always wear these. She first says he doesn't always wear those. And then he says, yes, he always wears them. After that, oh, well, yeah, she wears them every day. And then she immediately changes her mind and repeats what he says. He said, I always wear those. This is a definite miss and showing that she is not talking to the animal. She is making it up as she goes. When you hear that pet psychics are all reporting businesses booming, like, what do you make of that? I, I think it's a waste of money. But because a client is coming in and paying for this service, it seems legit. It seems like it's real. But really, I haven't seen any examples where it, it's blown my mind. Like, oh, wow, this is amazing. How, how would you know this? The skeptics will say that people like you are intuitive, perceptive, that you're reading cues and then extrapolating stuff that the animal can't really, I don't know, dispute. Yeah, I'd say they're not all wrong, but they're half wrong. What's the I half think wrong? it's a perception. I think it's the way, um, there has to be a, there's a level of interpretation that does happen. Yeah. Okay, and it's not always mine. It could be their human's interpretation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that actually does further the communication. I'm not here to debunk the skeptics. I have far too much work on my plate to go around. And the reason I keep doing it is because people keep coming. And that demand appears to have made the field less fringe, more mainstream. He was talking to me earlier. Um, do you give him kibble, like the brown kibble? Yeah. OK, um, he likes that. Don't change it, please. We caught up with Morgan at a recent taping of the Zoomer show in Toronto. With you in particular, I keep seeing horses around you. Um, did you grow up with horses? I had a horse as a teenager. Yeah. There seem to be hits, but a few misses too. Do you have a, a grandson? Uh, not that I know of. OK, there's a little boy. OK, are you guys with sisters? No, we're just really good friends. No, 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 you're sisters. No, 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 no. Morgan says in the 25 years she's been doing this, she does miss the mark sometimes because it's not an exact science. And that's the problem for Biddle. He used to be a ghost hunter until he says science proved him wrong. He kind of wishes it didn't. I'm open to it. To seeing the evidence. Yes, always, always. I mean, that's why I still do this job. If I was a cynic and just said, you know, everything is fake, none of it's real, that's it, I wouldn't be here. So deep down you really want to believe, but you I just do. haven't been convinced? I do. I want to believe. <laughs> I would love to see a ghost. I would love to see Bigfoot. I would love for a psychic to nail a whole bunch of stuff um, right down. Like, don't tell me that my, my dog likes kibble when you can't even tell me what the dog's name is. You know, if I have to tell you, if that's your first question, what's the dog's name? You're not talking to the dog. She likes bacon? Yes, and she says that she likes bandanas, so get her a bandana, please. The skeptics don't phase Morgan because she used to be one too, before this became her life's work. It's been my experience now that I can pull things out that I couldn't possibly know, that even surprised me. I am consistently, constantly surprised by the information that comes out. And the, the more surprising, the more that invests confidence in me that this work is real. So what I say to skeptics, thank God for you because you keep us real.